What's up, weirdo? Shade Tree Surgeon here, and it's time for yet another episode of the much maligned XS650 build. Yes, we have another project on the docket. We have the uh, 1971 Triumph T120R engine that I'm going to be making a bike out of as well, but I don't want to mess with that thing at all, at least until I have the XS650 chopper either finished or basically able to ride around whenever I want it legally. I don't want to get bite off more than I can chew. I don't want to start on two projects at the same time. So back into the Yamaha XS650 XS we go. And there we're going to stay until we make some real, real progress on it. So in the last episode, you saw that I've got this nice new clean garage to keep me motivated. I have the bike running. It's idling. It's actually doing pretty well. A bunch of you guys suggested that I should go down a size on the main jet because it sounds like I have my idle air screws out way too much. I always appreciate appreciate the advice. I read every single comment, good or bad. So even if I don't get around to responding to your comment, trust me, I read it. But I'm not going to be messing around with the carburetors today. Basically what I'm going to kind of tackle in today's episode is remaking the rear brake actuator. So the XS650 is eventually going to run just rear brakes. So I want to make sure those things are working good. So I did have a rod on the rear brake pedal before, but it wasn't quite long enough and it was in kind of a weird location so I actually ended up damaging it when I was kickstarting the bike so I've got to make a new one. So to make the new one I've got this rod that I got from Home Depot. I'm going to cut it to what hopefully is the right length. I'm going to put some threads on it and hopefully I'm going to have some working rear brakes. I don't have a whole lot of experience with fabricating parts or putting threads on anything so this is going to be a little bit of a learning experience for all of us. If you guys see me doing anything wrong please don't hesitate to point it out in the comments. Trust me, I'm going into a lot of this stuff with minimal experience and I don't really know what I'm doing. That's kind of the whole point of this is that we're learning together. And trust me, light me up in the comments. I don't care. I don't mind. Basically, if you say, hey, I'm doing something wrong and I read it in the comments, that's going to make me better, not worse. I don't have such a big ego that I can't take hearing when I'm doing something wrong. So like I said, I got this from Home Depot. This is just like a zinc plated uh, steel rod. Basically, I want to make one with this. This isn't going to be the permanent rod because I figure I'm probably going to kind of fuck this one up and this is going to be kind of practice. Like I said, I'm not I'm not a fabricator, but I aspire to be so. As stupid as this is, just cutting it to size and putting some threads on it, this will actually be the first part that I have ever legitimately fabricated myself for this motorcycle. A monumentous occasion, uh, although pretty pathetic when you think about what all it takes for fabrication in order to make a custom motorcycle. But you know what? I'm excited about it anyway. So for those of you guys who aren't familiar with how drum brakes work on a motorcycle, they are not hydraulically actuated. They are manually actuated, which means there has to be a physical rod going from right there where uh, that's the the lever that actuates the rear drum brake all the way to the pedal which is right there so that's the part i'm going to be attempting to make today it did already have one on there it just it wasn't long enough and it stuck out at a weird angle so like i said when i was kickstarting the bike i ended up damaging it got the old one right here if the camera wants to focus on it and uh, you can see it's got these nice fittings on it and I've also got these uh, threads on here. So I've got a tap and die set so I can kind of use this one to figure out what kind of threads it takes and then go ahead and put the new threads on the new rod. And of course you can see right there where I really messed things up kickstarting the bike. Of course it wasn't long enough anyway so it's not really that big of a deal. All right, I got it marked up. Uh, probably a little long, but we'll see how it turns out. You can always take more off, but you can't put it back. What's all the banging in here? Working on motorcycles. It takes banging. Mm. Sometimes you have to bang things. Time for some hipster fireworks. And of course I'm having to secure it like this because I'm an idiot and I bought a shitty Chinese vise on eBay or Amazon rather, and uh, I was hammering something on it and promptly broke the damn thing. Yes, I know this is super, super ghetto. I'm not proud of it, but it's all I have right now. So that's what I'm gonna use.
Ah, that was moving the whole time. <laughs> that didn't work very well. So, anybody got some vice recommendations? All right, let's get these fittings off so I can see what size the threads are. So hopefully I can put threads on this. So somebody who knew a little bit more about fabrication could probably tell me something about this, but looks like the rod I have is a little bit thicker than the old one. So uh, I don't know how much harder it's gonna be to put the same size threads on this one as it is on this one, but I guess we're about to find out. So the kit I got to cut threads came with this guy right here, which I guess is supposed to figure out what the threads are. Uh, never used one before, let's see if it's accurate. 24 is looking pretty close to me, so let's find whatever one matches that and see if it screws on there all right. Well, here goes nothing. I'm having to start with actually the wrong size. I got the wrong size on here, it's actually too big, and then hopefully once I get this cut, I can go ahead and cut the smaller one. And of course, I'm also realizing a vise would be really handy right about now. I might actually have to stop this video until I can get a new vise. For the sake of continuing the video, let's do this. Again, like I was telling you guys, I, I'm learning along with you. I've never done this before. This is why I bought a shitty rod to do this with instead of something nice. I'm gonna practice and see if I can make one out of a crappy rod, then move on to something nice. I'm sure all you guys who have to make threads for a living are probably just really cringing right now at how badly I'm fucking this up. I just had a thought. Uh, maybe it's supposed to go in through that side. I probably should have read the directions better. That makes more sense, because then you could like adjust that to the size it's supposed to be and hang it. Man, I'm a fucking idiot. Read the manual, you dipshit. Man, look at that. Doesn't that just make a whole lot of sense there? Oh, much, much better. Look at that. more of this on there. I'm not really sure how much to use, but I figure you really probably can't overdo it. God, this would be a lot easier with a vise. Oh, there goes my other clamp. All right, well, now that I got those threads on there, I'm gonna try the other one, which is smaller threads, which are the right threads, but I couldn't fit this one on there to begin with because the piece of the bar I got is too big. So maybe this is gonna work, uh, maybe it isn't, and if you know anything about this kind of stuff, you already know the answer, yes or no. So let's give it a whirl for everybody who doesn't know. So probably to nobody's surprise who knows what they're doing, that didn't work at all. Uh, I thought I was gonna be able to cut the threads one size and then recut the threads down to a different size, but it turns out um, I'm just stupid and I just need to buy the actual right size rod uh, to be able to put those threads on. So that's what I'm gonna do and that's gonna be it for the video right now and we'll pick this back up when I have the right size here. Well, four days later, I finally have a rod that's the correct diameter. And welcome back to Shade Tree Sucks at Making Parts and Working on Motorcycles, but we're sucking together. Now that I hopefully have a rod that's going to be the right size that I can cut the proper threads on, I also, since we're, we're four days later now, I had to go to work. I was working on that on a Thursday, it's now Monday. Just to let you guys know that running into one little snag for me can sometimes set me back days because I have so little time to actually work on motorcycles but we're back at it and I figured I might as well get something else to help me along this path as well so let's see what that is and PS you know I could have just cut all that stuff out of me failing miserably and trying something that was probably just so stupid to somebody who knows how to do this kind of stuff I could have cut all that out I could have left that out but the whole point of this is showing you guys who are watching this that hey even if you don't have the knowledge, even if you don't know how to do this crap, there's no reason that you can't figure it out. So I'm gonna leave in the fails right with the wins. And that was most assuredly a fail, and I gotta admit that I'm pretty embarrassed that I even tried that. And I'm still even more embarrassed that I'm actually gonna leave it in the video, but whatever. I don't wanna lie to you guys and pretend like I got it perfect right out of the gate. So in the interest of making my life easier, I went ahead and got this. 
Well, I'm sure it's not the best vice that money can buy, but it does donate a solar reading light to somebody who wants to learn how to read in, uh, I'm not sure where, Africa, I guess, but uh, hey, maybe that may comes with a little feel good. So <laughs> even if the vice totally sucks, I can be like, hey, at least a kid in, a kid in Africa is reading a book right now. So oh, that's pretty cool. I like reading. I'm in the middle of reading Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn right now, the first trilogy that came very highly recommended, but you guys came here to work on motorcycles, not hear about my stupid fantasy novels. And it can't be any worse than the advice I had before, which I literally cracked half of that one off, so that one was pretty terrible. Well, first things first, let's get this new piece of metal, uh, the correct piece of metal, hopefully, cut down to the right size. Much easier. All right, let's try this again. All right, sucker's on there. Haven't rode it down the street yet to see if it works, but I'm about to do that right now before it gets too late, even though it is dark outside, but it gets dark early these days. What can you do? It is only 6.30, so I figure I can fire up the motorcycle and not piss off the neighbors too bad, but I'm more excited about this than I should be. I know it's just a stupid little rod with threads on either end. It, I know that that's all it is. And in fact, it was already there before. I just broke the old one, so I had to make a new one that was a different length. But this is technically the very first part that I have ever fabricated myself. This is the first motorcycle part for this motorcycle, my first thing I've ever built that I actually made myself. I made that. I made this. And as dumb as it is and as easy as it is, that still makes me super happy. <laughs> First step on what is going to probably be a very long, very painful, very full of stupid mistakes uh, journey along my way into making this a motorcycle that's worth looking at. But hey, everybody's gotta start somewhere, right? And this is where I'm starting. All right, let's see how hard it is to actually get this thing started from a completely cold and it is actually a little chilly out completely cold start here well this is going to be a really short test ride <laughs> can't really test the brakes if the bike doesn't move every time all right well let's see if the brakes work so I'm just gonna kind of ride around and only use the rear brakes I'm not even gonna touch the front brakes and just see how they do it so far hey they stopped the bike <laughs> I mean they're doing they're doing what they're supposed to which is make the bike slow down. I can definitely hear a little bit of protest back there from the brakes. They haven't been used in quite some time, so I don't know if maybe I can hear it kind of still grinding after I let off the brakes. So I don't know if things are just a little gummed up in there and they're not releasing like they should, so they're dragging a little bit as I let off the brake, but, but they're working. They certainly slow the bike down. You guys see me slowing down. I haven't touched the front brake once yet, so. My stupid little rod is working. <laughs> I know I'm way more excited about that stupid rod than I should be. It's just a, a piece of metal I bought at Home Depot and put some threads on. Any fucking jack wagon can do that, but I don't know, man. It just it represents the very first thing that I've ever actually made myself for this motorcycle. You know, I put parts on, I fix stuff. But, you know, putting parts on, putting these carbs on, and just 
you know, putting all this stuff together, I didn't make any of that stuff. I didn't fabricate it. It was just parts I bought and basically bolted onto the bike. That rod, that $4.88 rod on the back of the, that connects the rear brakes, I made that. <laughs> and to me, that's more exciting than all the other stuff put together. See these trucks barreling around the corner? This is why I didn't want to ride last night with no headlight. Well, boys and girls, that's going to do it for this episode. Hey. I made something. Y'all might think it's stupid, but me, I'm pretty gas on that fact. So, till next time, y'all, keep it weird.